Hi everyone, I'm Anika from Made to Sew, and this tutorial is going to be focusing on how to fix gaping in the neckline or armhole. Now, this has been a long requested video, and there could be a number of reasons why you might have a garment that is gaping in the neckline or the armhole. It could be because the top part of the garment is too large for you, and that you actually need to be choosing a smaller size in the garment completely and perhaps doing something like a full bust adjustment. I recommend that you do watch my full bust adjustment playlist because I do talk about how to measure yourself and what you need to consider if you need a full bust adjustment. Now you may have done a full bust adjustment, you may not need one and you may still find that you are getting gaping in areas. This can be for a couple of reasons. Now, you might find that you're getting gaping in the armhole, and this could be because the garment is actually drafted to wear with sleeves. And if you want to wear a garment that's designed to be worn with sleeves, sleeveless, ideally you want to have a slightly snugger armhole. So you might find that you're getting some gaping there. It can also be, again, if you have got a fuller bust, you can often get gaping in the neckline or the armhole. And it's just because it's not fitting over your bust properly. Another reason is simply because the garment actually hasn't been designed very well and I'm sorry to say it but I do find that that can be a problem with some patterns. So I'm here to show you what you need to do in order to fix it. Now in this tutorial it's really going to be a fixing solution rather than actually telling you what to do in terms of amendments to the pattern for your individual figure. Obviously I don't know what your individual figure is like it might be that if I saw you in person, I would suggest something else. But for this, I'm going to be showing you how to fix gaping like this. Now, as you can imagine, it was actually quite hard to find a garment that I could get to gape. So here we go. Here is my, um, it's a, a crossover top and I have managed to get it to gape. So it's going to show you the process. Now, what you need to do if you are getting any gaping, no matter what neckline, v-neck, circle neck, crossover neck like this, what you need to do is you need to pinch out the gaping. So getting some pins, I'm going to pin the gaping away. Now when I do this, I need to pin it towards a dart. If you don't have a dart in the garment, then you need to pin it to the center or the apex of the bust, and then this will actually create a dart, a side dart, in the garment to start with. We can discuss about how you would get rid of the side dart later, but for now you're going to need to pin out the excess gaping. The same if you're getting it in the armhole. You'll pin out the amount that you're getting, and you always need to pin it to the point of a dart. So if I had a dart on this garment, I would pin the gaping and pin it to the point of the dart. Or if you have a seam, you can also pin it all the way across the seam. Perhaps if you have a princess seam in here, I could pin it all the way across. Now hopefully you can see on the one side here that I have pinned in the neckline. So I've taken out the amount of gaping on the neckline. This garment does not have a dart. So I have taken it as in a dart shape. So I've got the majority on the gaping neckline taking it to a point at the bust apex. And with this pattern, I would actually have to add a side dart. You may find that a dart works best on you. I'll be honest, if you have got a full bust, I think darts work better. I can show you ways, and I'll probably do that in another tutorial, on how to get rid of a side dart if you don't want it. But I would always say that darts generally look better if you have got a full bust because that's the reason they're there. Darts are there to shape around the curves of the body. And if you have got full curves, then you ideally need a dart to be able to shape around that properly and to get a good fit. Let's look at this side. So all I would do is simply pinch the amount that I want. And it doesn't really matter where I take this. Um, I would just take it so that you're able to sort of take a straight line accurately to the, um, the bust apex or to the point of the dart. And I will show you two other garments in a second. I've got one with a dart, just so I'll show you how to pin to the point of the dart, and another one with a princess seam, so I can show you how you would take this all the way across a pattern piece. 
But this is my starting point. And then once I've shown you the other two garments, you can join me at the pattern cutting table and I will show you how we make this amendment onto the pattern so that it doesn't happen in the real garment. So I would do this, obviously, normally this would be on my sample garment, my toile, my muslin. That is where I am making these adjustments. And then I would change them on the pattern piece so that I don't have a problem in either the next garment or in the final garment. So this garment doesn't really have a gaping neckline, but it does have a princess seam. So what you want to do with a garment with a princess seam is to pin out the excess at the neckline and you pin all the way until you get to nothing at the princess seam. So all you are doing is removing an amount from that front panel. The same would happen if this garment was sleeveless. I would pin an amount at this armhole and I would probably pin it in the side panel here. Again, coming to nothing where the seam ends. And I'll show you how you can pivot that away through the whole of the pattern piece. Now this garment has a dart. So what I'm doing in this garment is pinching from the neckline the amount I want to remove. And I'm pinning that all the way down to nothing at the point of the dart. The same would apply if you were working to reduce the armhole. You would pinch out the amount you wanted at the armhole, again, taking it to nothing at the point of the dart. You're going to want to start by grabbing the pattern that you're working with. And this pattern here is for a wrap over blouse and it does not have a side dart. So you can see that's the bottom of it. And then up here, I have got my shoulder just taping it onto my table so that it stays nice and flat for you. Now, this pattern, as I said, doesn't have a dart. I have, however, marked the bust apex onto the pattern. If you don't know how, if your pattern doesn't have a bust apex and you don't know how to mark this on the pattern, then I do have tutorials that show you how to position it, how to measure it on yourself and then position it onto the pattern. The alternative is obviously that to get to this point, you will have fitted your sample garment. So you could easily mark your bust apex onto your sample garment with a tailor's tack or something like that, or a pin. And then you could position that onto your pattern piece and just copy the same location on the real garment onto the pattern piece. We now need to record what you have pinned on your garment onto the pattern. And all you need to do here is you need to line the two of them up. I would probably start at my shoulder seam here and work my way down. You could start from the underarm. It really depends on your pattern. But you want to lay one on top of the other, checking everything. My pattern doesn't have seam allowances, which is why I can match the edge of my garment to the edge of my pattern. If yours has seam allowances, you might need to draw them on or just take them into consideration. Then once you get to the bit that you have pinned, you are going to mark it onto the pattern. Now, you also need to consider how much you have pinned. So you need to measure this. Grab a ruler and you're going to measure one side, but remember that it is double because you have folded it. So the one side, mine measures one centimeter, three eighths, and because I have pinched that as a fold, it is going to be removing two centimeters, three quarters of an inch. And we know that this dart points to the bust apex. So that's all we need from the garment. All you need to know is where it's pointing, how much you've taken, and where you have taken that amount. So now I have marked the two centimeter mark that I wish to remove from my neckline. And I'm going to draw that in to my bust apex, just like a dart. Obviously, you'll work with pencil so that you have nice, sharp, accurate lines. Now, on this pattern, we do not have a side dart. So what we will need to do to close this and to remove this gaping from the neckline is we will need to give the pattern a dart somewhere as a starting point. Now, generally the easiest place is to take that into a side dart. You might find that you're actually happy with the garment having a side dart. I generally suggest if you have a fuller bust that garments most of the time look better if you have some form of a dart to shape around your fuller figure. However, I will also do a tutorial that will show you how to remove the side dart if you no longer want it. And I can very quickly talk you through how I would, how I would remove it on this pattern here. 
Right, I'm going to take this completely horizontally from the bust apex out to the side seam, but you could really hit this at any angle you wanted. Um, and I'm just gonna take draw a line from bust apex to side seam. Now, the same process would apply if you were working with something in the armhole. You would again use your garment to measure the place or the position of the amount you want to remove in the armhole, draw a dart to the bust apex, and now we're going to do some cutting. So now what we're going to do is to cut along one of the dart legs that you wish to remove. Two, but not through the bust apex. It doesn't really matter which one you cut. And then I'm going to cut along the new dart that I'm adding in, two, but not through the bust apex. Now we are going to use the method of dart manipulation. If you're unsure what that is, I will pop a link to my tutorial here that shows you how to do it. I also have a what is tutorial. And use dart manipulation to move darts around a pattern to give them a different position in a garment for design details. However, we can also use that technique now to close this unwanted excess of dart. And we're going to slide that closed, which is going to open us a side dart. I'm going to take this dart closed because this is the amount to remove the gaping. The same would apply if you had this in the armhole. And then we're going to need a little scrap of paper to go behind this one. Okay, so I have filled in my dart with a scrap of paper. If you were planning on sewing this as a dart, you would need to what's called true the dart, measure both of the dart legs, confirm that they're the same length. You would need to decide on the dart point. You probably don't want it ending at the bust apex, so you would need to bring that back slightly. And you would also need to true the dart in the direction that you plan to sew it. So this is where you fold it and wheel over the edge here, and it will give you a shape depending on the shape of your side seam. Now, I do have a tutorial that talks all about truing darts, so I'll pop a link to that here. Now, say we do not want this. We don't really want to have this dart in this pattern. I will film a video that shows you some other methods of um, and removing it, but for now, with this pattern, I have a very simple solution. I already have a slight curve in the hem where this joins the waist seam, so all I would actually need to do is to measure the width of my new dart. Um, mine is two and a half centimeters, so an inch. And I would measure up on the side seam at the bottom this amount. And then I would take my curve and I would curve this amount, removing one inch or 2.5 centimeters, whatever the dart measures at the side here, from the side seam, coming back into nothing in the center front because the dart actually doesn't measure anything at this point. You will need to test this, um, but it is a method that you can use if you already have a curved hem of a garment or if you're happy to put a curved hem in. I will be sharing some other methods, as I said, in my coming tutorial. So that would mean that this dart was now removed. I would cut away this piece here, and I now have fixed the gaping issue on my neckline by creating a dart and then removing the dart. I would need to smooth this neckline edge off slightly, and if you have any corresponding pieces, facings, things like that, linings, you're going to need to do the same thing so that they still all fit together. Right, let's now look at what you would do if you have a pattern with a dart. So here's another example pattern, and I've just drawn this down to the waist. We have got a deep scoop neckline and an armhole. Now I've got a side dart on this pattern. So I'm gonna show you how to remove an amount from the neckline and also the armhole, because you can do both at the same time if you need to. So I would obviously have made up my sample garment to have realized that I've got a gaping neckline. I would then take that garment and compare it just like we did with the first one. And I would say perhaps on this curve here, I need to remove a little amount. Maybe it's only a centimeter at the neckline here. And rather than using the bust apex, which I do have marked on this pattern, but you do not need to have one, I'm going to simply connect this dart to the point of the other darts. 
So I'm making a dart and I'm connecting it to the point of this dart, just like so. Now, I've also got an issue with my armhole. Perhaps this is supposed to be a sleeveless garment and it's gaping. So I'm going to take a centimetre and a half, five eighths of an inch from the armhole. And again, obviously you would compare your real garment to position it in the same place, but it would probably be around this location. And I would also connect that in to the point of the dart, just like so. Now we would grab some scissors. We're going to cut up one leg of the original dart and one leg of the amount that we want to remove for our gaping armhole and gaping neckline. It does not really matter which dart leg you cut up, you must cut and leave a smidgen at the dart point. When I say a smidgen, I mean an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch, two to three millimeters. It really isn't very much. Just let the paper sort of hang on there. And finally this one. And you could do one of these amounts that you want to remove and then you could do the second one. So you could do the neckline one first, then you could do the armhole one. You don't need to do them both at the same time, but I thought I would show you. Okay, so what we will do now is we will slide this neckline dart closed, just like so, and tape that closed. And we will do the same to the armhole. And you can see by doing this, we have opened up the dart and created a larger dart. You may find if you have a fuller bust that you end up with an extremely large dart here and it is best to do what's called a cutaway dart. And I have a tutorial that shows you how to do that. I'll pop a link to that here. So I would tape that down as well. And there you have it. I have fixed my armhole issues and my neckline issues. You would need to blend the neckline and the armhole if you've got any sort of staggering. Um, just use a French curve to do that. You would need to fill in the amount that you've added into the dart here. And I would just retrue the dart, check that everything is going to fit together properly. Obviously, again, if you've got a facing or a lining, you need to amend that as well so that the bodice pieces all fit together. Finally, let's have a quick look at a princess seam. Okay, so I've got my two pattern pieces for my princess seam here. This would be my front piece and this would be my side front. Obviously this is the curve that goes over the bust or to the side of the bust and we've got a bit of a V neckline going on here. So what would happen here? We don't have any darts if you wanted to remove an amount from the neckline or from the armhole. All you would need to do on a princess seam, it's very simple, is to take the amount that you want to remove all the way across the pattern piece. So for example, on this neckline here, Obviously you would have fitted the garment, you will then be looking at where to take the amount and how much you want to take based on the garment you fitted. Let's say I want to take a centimetre and a half, five eighths, from this point on my neckline. What I would do is I would then draw that to where you have pinned on your garment. That will probably be around the sort of bust apex, perhaps a little bit higher than the bust apex. But all you need to do is to record what you did on the real sample garment onto this pattern piece here. So again, I'd probably measure up the seam and say, well, it was three inches, seven centimeters down or whatever it might be. And then you would connect that. So it needs to become nothing at this point here. So the edge of the pattern it becomes nothing. All we then need to do is to cut down one of the dart legs to but not through at the point and close it just like so. And that has removed that amount from the neckline. You would need to true the neckline, true any other components that are going to be joining this. The other thing I need to add here is that my pattern piece does not have seam allowances. Let me show you, let's pretend this side pattern piece has a seam allowance. Right, if I have a seam allowance, I'm just gonna dot that in in red for you. And my seam allowance is standard 5 eighths, 1.5 centimeters. So I've drawn the stitching line onto the pattern piece, measuring 5 eighths, 1.5 centimeters in from the edge. Yours might be different. Obviously you would draw the stitching line or the seam allowance that your pattern is working with. I would then compare my garment to my pattern piece. And let's say, for example, we want to take something out of this little part of the armhole here. 
and we want to do it on the side front piece rather than the front piece perhaps you've got it works better on this piece so I would always be working on my stitching line perhaps I need to take a quarter of an inch and that is about six millimeters right here so I'm always working on the stitching line there rather than from the edge of the pattern like we were doing before and I managed to take that sort of right across to the point, almost the bust apex, and it became nothing at that point. So I would draw in my lines. In Sharpie, you'll see that a quarter of an inch doesn't look like much, but it will look like more in your pencil because your lines are thinner. So that's the amount that I want to remove. Right, I'm gonna grab my scissors. Now, what I'm gonna do here is at this end, I can cut all the way through one of the dart legs because we're going to close it. But I'm gonna stop cutting at that stitching line. Then to allow me to actually close this, I need to have a pivot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in through the seam allowance to the point of the dart that I want to remove, but not through. That will give me the pivot point to close the amount that I need just affecting the stitching lines, not the seam allowances. And you'll see that I've sort of gained a tiny, tiny bit on the seam allowance edge there. Again, I would just blend and true both your stitching lines and your seam allowances here so that you have a nice, accurate finish. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you now know what to do to fix gaping necklines and armholes.